Ohio National decides to go from a mutual company to a stock company, and, and they really call it a demutualization process. We're going to talk about the pros and cons to that, and we're going to give you all the facts that we know to date. This is Better Wealth with Caleb Williams. If you're a policyholder, if you know someone that's a policyholder, or if you're someone that represents Ohio National, we really want this to be the one-stop shop where you go and learn more. My name's Caleb Williams. And I'm Dan Kaminsky. And the purpose of Better Wealth is we want to help people live more intentionally, and we do so by specializing in helping people overfund life insurance. And in my book, The End Asset, I talk about the importance of a mutual carrier. You want to be with a mutual company if you do whole life, and, and there's a lot of benefits to that. And I think through this video, you'll see that regardless of what your opinion is long-term of Ohio National, the people that are policyholders of Ohio National are going to benefit regardless in the short term, regardless of where you believe long-term the company is going, there's going to be a benefit because of the mutual um, company. And so with that, um, Dan, why don't you open this up and let's break Let's break this scenario down. Yeah. So first, I, I want to overarchingly say, okay, what's happening? So Ohio National has announced that they are doing a sponsored demutualization, and what that means essentially is that a company is acquiring them. And so this company is called Constellation, which is a mutual insurance holding company essentially from Canada, and they're looking at creating their own strategic investment in a company like Ohio National to be part of their portfolio. And so they're coming to the table with a billion dollars, a nice even billion dollars, mm -hmm. um, which is going to be injected into Ohio National in two ways. The The first is a $500 million uh, buyout of the policyholders, basically to extinguish their um, their share, I guess, yeah. uh, or their, their mutual aspect, um, or their mutual interest, I guess is the technical term. And then the other additional 500 million is going to be for strategic investment, growth, um, opportunities like that. And so the purchase of this and then is really triggering the demutualization so that they can reposition things a little bit. Uh, but I think before we go any deeper, you should explain the difference between a mutual company and a stock company. So I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. So the, the difference, and I, I'll, I'll go to football because I like this example, is in a football team, NFL, there's owners of each company. Now, the the only uh, NFL team that's owned by the people are the Green Bay Packers. And Dan and I are from Wisconsin and are proud owners of the Green Bay Packers. Now, this might be a bad example because there's really not a ton of benefits uh, to owning the Packers monetarily. But the idea is there's not one person that owns Green Bay Packers. And the revenue d doesn't go to one family or one person. It goes to uh, the people. And so that that is an example of the difference between a mutual carrier versus a stock carrier is in insurance, regardless of what insurance company you have, there's profits. And at the end of the year, the profits go to the shareholders. In a stock company, like the companies that Warren Buffett owns, um, the, the profits go to him and anyone that is owner of Berkshire Hathaway or owner of that company. In a mutual carrier, the, own, the, the profits go to the owners, but to become an owner, you need to be a policyholder. And the idea of mutuality is everyone is kind of in this together. And so there's a lot of efficiencies. And the, the idea is if you're going to work with a whole life carrier, work with a carrier that you will get the upside of ownership and all the benefits that come along. Because there are whole life carriers that are stock that pay dividends. And there's mutual company that pays dividends. What's the difference? And we'll actually break this down in multiple areas. Um, but the mutual carrier, there, there's obviously a lot of benefits, and we'll break that down. And if you are a policyholder of Ohio National, you want to know this stuff because there are benefits that you will receive if this deal goes through, and we'll tell you what it is. Well, in, in that, I like that you said if this happens because this actually isn't set in stone. There's a number of things that still need to happen. Uh, but we do believe that they wouldn't announce something like this if it wasn't pretty much a done deal. Uh, but in order for this to happen, number one, it has to pass regulatory approval. So um, yeah, I think it's actually the state of Ohio because they're, they yeah. are um, um, domiciled there, has to go through regulatory there, probably has to go through some other levels. And then after that, assuming it's approved, then it goes to a vote of policyholders. It's already been approved by the board. Um, but it will actually go to a true vote to the policyholders because it is a mutual company. Uh, but again, they do expect that this this will go through. And it timing wise, we're looking at the second half of 2021. My guess is, uh, just with how slow things go, probably the 
the far half of, uh, of 2021. And so it's through this process of the purchase, the buyout happening, um, you know, the votes happening, that being all approved, and then it'll work through the process of, of the demutualization. And so the, the thing here is like, okay, what, why is this happening? Correct. You know, and, and is, is this to come for other mutual carriers and all this kind of stuff? And, and the first thing is right now we're just in a ultra low interest rate environment, right. which these companies haven't experienced this long-term aspect of, of low interest rates, you know, because they've, they've been around hundred plus years yep. and interest rates have generally been relatively high. Yep. And so this, this is, it's not like this came out of nowhere. We've, you know, we've known that interest rates have been low and, and with these, these big companies that are old, it takes, yep. sometimes takes them some time to, to get with the times. I like to think of it as like a big ship out in the ocean of like the ship, if it has to turn all the way back around, yep. it does take some time to, um, make different investments, do different things, be more strategic, em- embrace technology. And, you know, so all of the carriers are under stress simply because of the lower interest rate environment, which is reducing their revenues and, and things like that. But this this is not saying that this is going to happen to yeah. all mutual carriers because they, there's different aspects. There's diff, you know, they all have different balance sheets. The way that they do business is different. And Ohio National just so happened to be a unique situation. And this this is an opportunity for Constellation really to uh, strengthen their balance sheet. Yeah, and and by the way, Ohio National is making this sound like a great great thing. Like they're they're going to have a half a billion dollars injected into making the company more competitive, all these things. And and Dan and I can look at that and see the pros and cons. The, the point is we, we should really talk about short term. Mm-hmm. If you're a policy owner of Ohio National, is this, Dan, going to affect the contract that you signed? Is anything going to change? Is is it, I mean, what what are we hearing as it relates to that? Well, so what we know right now is number one, nothing is going to change as it relates to your contract. And it's, I love that you said contract because it is true. It is a contract. And so all enforced policies will remain the same. Nothing, Nothing's going to happen to those. Um, and there will be some sort of a benefit. And so when I talked uh, previously about the billion dollars, that first 500 million is going to the policyholders. And the interesting context to that is the Ohio National dividend last year was about $100 million. Right. And so we're talking five times the annual dividend in injection to the policyholders. And that's going to be in the form of, as we currently understand, and this is potential, yeah. of a fixed fixed benefit as well as a variable benefit. Right. So we're looking at potentially, again, these the, we don't know for sure, is some sort of a cash buyout, uh, which is basically to buy out your interest in the mutuality. And not has nothing to do with your actual policy. I just want to be very clear on that. They're not buying out your policy and it's going away. It's it's simply to buy out your interest in the mutual aspect of the company. And then the second piece is some sort of variable benefit. So this might be the issuance of stock since it's going to be a stock company. So for a policyholder, you're looking at potentially getting a cash payout and some sort of stock in the new stock company, Ohio National. In, in addition to their already declared dividend. Now, that's that's like short term the the difference between if this happened with a company like a MetLife that actually went through this process a while ago, they offer whole life, and there's other stock companies that offer whole life. If they if this something if something like this happened, there would be no cash injection because the owners are not the whole life care whole yeah. life policy owners; they're the shareholders. So this is so this is something that's going to be unique, and I we don't we can't say because we don't know what's going on. Um, as someone that owns an Ohio national policy myself. Um, I, I'm very grateful that this is a mutual carrier, that there'll be some type of benefit. Now, long-term, and this is, this is again, I want to be very, very clear on this video. We are not giving you blanket advice. We're not, we're not giving you the, this is what you should do. I'm, I'm going to tell you what I'm seeing when I, when something like this happens and why I'm so grateful to just understand how life insurance works. There's, there's something called the 1035 exchange. Now, if you're into real estate, um, there's something called a 1031 exchange, which pretty much means that if you buy or sell or transfer real estate, um, you don't necessarily need to realize all those gains in that in that process. Mm-hmm. A lot of people utilize um, life insurance because of the tax benefits. So one of the things that I know is, and and 10, 1035 is where you can transfer a life insurance, you know, cash from one policy to the next. In most cases. It's something that's frowned upon because 
if a lot of times if you already have an established policy, it's not in your best interest to transfer um, because then you're starting over. And, and while uh, it goes from cash to cash, there's just there's a lot of benefits of of maintaining where you're at. But in some cases, it does make sense if you're in a really poor uh, policy, if it's if it's underperforming, there may be some um, strategies to transfer that. And, and the cool thing is it doesn't affect in your taxes. This is, again, this is not tax advice. This is not insurance advice. It's not investment advice. I just want to be very clear with that. Um, the point that I'm trying to make is regardless of what happens long term, a lot of, of, of our clients, a lot of people that you're with Ohio National right now, you're not, you have options. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important to know because I, I believe regulations are like this to give people flexibility. And there's, there's countries like Canada that the laws don't work like this. And so it makes, it makes me grateful to be in a position where you have options. So just in summary, and then you can summarize my summary, <laughs> is right now, short term, what we know, if this goes through, if you're a policyholder, there, there may be some fixed benefit and variable benefit if this goes through and, and nothing in your contract is going to change because ultimately if someone's purchasing the assets and liabilities of the company, they have to honor those contracts. There is, there is some people that say long term, if Ohio National switches from a mutual company to a stock company, is that, is that going to affect the long term benefits of the policyholder? What Ohio National is saying is absolutely not. This is actually going to make us stronger, and we're going to be much better, and this is the best thing that ever happened. And I want you to know whether you believe them or not, there's options out there. And I know that there's uh, – I know for us personally, we are, we are connected, very well connected in the space, and we're, and we're going to the table and really figuring out how we serve our clients best, regardless of what companies they are. Um, and I think the moral of the story is in a mutual carrier – is way better off than a, than a stock carrier. And um, going forward, will we sell Ohio National? I don't know. At, at this point, they're not, with this news going forward, they're not something that, they're not the company of choice going forward. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. In, in my opinion, it's mainly because of the unknown. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, my, my summarization of your summarization is uh, the Caleb touching on the 1035 is, is not saying that. If you have an Ohio national policy, we're going to jump ship and 1035 your policy. What what he's saying is there's options, and that's really the beauty of yeah. life insurance in general. Yeah. Is regardless, you know, 1035 in a lot of respects is used for people who have had policies from yesteryear, like back in the day that was poorly structured, poorly funded, yeah. and is just kind of like a wrap everything together into a new policy that's more efficient. And you know, we'll we'll see what happens. I, I'm curious my nature is like okay when a company acquires another company usually what they do is they gut half of it because there's a lot of uh, waste and inefficiency bring in a lot of new technology and and then you know get going and so i my prediction and again i hold no financial licenses this is this is my prediction uh is that this is this is going to happen constellation is going to completely reconfigure ohio national in some form or fashion um to be more of a technology facing company because th that's part of the thing too of just the overarching landscape of life insurance right now is there's a lot of tech companies that are coming out and like life insurance companies called like lemonade and plaid yeah. and purple and like all these weird things it's like what the heck is this and they're they're the it's the new word the disruption disrupting the life insurance industry and i think that's partly what is going to happen here is getting more technology focused ohio national has always had very competitive term and so i have a funny feeling that you know that that is a route that they might go is be more into the the term route. Um, you know who knows? There's there's going to be some sort of a restructuring, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, right now it there it's it's good that you're a policyholder because you'll get some sort Sorry. of benefit, and then past that we'll see what happens. But it's not going to be some drastic difference uh, compared to what you thought was going to happen. And and they have to honor the contract exactly. So um, what do you want to go to your PowerPoint now? Sure. All right. So I want you to know that if you want to learn more information, you can go check out the description below. We'll have links. We'll have the press release. We'll have all the, the all the information so that you can learn more. Um, hopefully this video is helpful. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through some of the high level summary of our video, but then some additional uh, content that you came up with. And if you enjoy this video, please share it, like it, uh, comment below. Uh, and we we 
produce weekly videos on financial topics, life insurance, intentional living, other other ideas to help people really take back control of their money. And so if that interests you, you can subscribe to the channel. All right. Yeah, so really this PowerPoint is just to make sure that we touched everything, and I, I think we did, is that, again, if approved, Ohio National will demutualize and be a stock-owned subsidiary to the Canadian company Constellation. Uh, they're going to purchase for a billion. There's $500 million going to the policyholders and to, to buy out their ownership interest. There's the, the actual term. This is why we have the PowerPoint. Uh, the remaining $500 million is going to be for strategic business purposes. And again, that's a lot of money. Like in the context of life yeah. insurance, it's not, but that's a yeah. lot of money. Especially when you take a company like Ohio National and their dividend was about $100 million. Yeah. You take that and then in addition to all this other money, there, there's going to be some benefit. And nobody's right now claiming to know they know that because we, they, Ohio National can't say until this is approved. But if you just do simple math, you know that there, this is, is significant money when you look at a company like Ohio National. Yeah, I would love to see what we could do with $500 million. <laughs> yes, me too. Uh, and lastly, the, the proposed transi- transition requires regulatory and policyholder approval. Um, you know, again, low interest rate environment. These are large, old companies, new technology driven companies. Um, yeah. And again, they they are positioning this that this is this is going to increase the company's financial position. It absolutely is, especially in the context of what you just talked about of how much that uh, that injection is based on what the annual dividend is. It's going to enhance their market position. That's for me. That's slang for or, or um, not slang, but um, basically a nugget saying that we're going to retool a bit. Yeah. And then, you know, have necessary re- resources to facilitate future growth. And again, they're, they're trying to reposition themselves for a brighter future. And again, I wanted to highlight that this does not mean that other mutual companies are headed in the same direction. And again, it's not that it's a bad thing either. Yeah. It's, it, it's not good or it, bad. It's, it just is. I, I think Ohio National would be the first company to say, if this goes through, their whole life going forward may not be competitive. I don't. They're not saying anything at this point. There's a lot of other things that they might be looking at doing. Um, but I think it's. I think it's pretty. It's. It's a. It's a long term whole life with a mutual carrier is competitive because of this example. Absolutely. Okay. And lastly, what does it mean for policyholders? Is again, all policies are going to remain in force, and there's going to be some sort of compensation for the extinguishment of your member membership interest, which is a potential fixed and variable compensation. And again, we, we don't know what this is going to look like. We're going to be coming out with more and more information as we find out. Uh, we're going to be linking a bunch of information that has come out from Ohio National as to um, what is being said and, and uh, talked about right now. Uh, but again, we're still pretty early yeah. in 2021. And who knows? Maybe this doesn't even happen. Yeah. And, and if it doesn't happen, everything goes back to, to normal. I think that the key thing is if you are a policyholder of Ohio National, um, talk to your advi- your agent, your advisor, um, and and I want you to know that there's no nothing drastic is going to happen because at the end of the day, there all these decisions take time. But we just want you to have some information. Um, if you hold on Ohio National Policy and are uh, one of our clients, we will keep you up to date with all the information. And again, we we are doing this first and foremost for the people that we serve that have an interest in Ohio National and make sure that they're being served to the best of their abilities. That's right. So if you have questions, comments, concerns, or as Caleb says, tomatoes, um, let us know in the comments. Uh, Otherwise, there'll be a whole lot of information of how to get in touch with us. Thank you so much for listening to the Better Wealth Podcast. It would mean the world to me if you could hit subscribe, leave a review, and share this with the people that you know and love.